Hello everyone and this is Priyanka from Edureka and in today's tutorial we are going to learn about hierarchical clustering. So if you're really figuring out how and what exactly is hierarchical clustering and where hierarchical clustering can be applied in real life situations and how it can solve various problems and how is it different from other clustering algorithms, then my friend, this tutorial is just for you. Let's look at to our today's agenda. And today's topic that we will cover uh, is understanding what exactly is clustering and how various clusters are formed. And we will understand this with the help of, you know, drawing the cluster. So that would be very much interactive. Moving on further, we will understand what is hierarchical clustering and what is the logic behind hierarchical or, hera or forming various levels of clustering. And we will again draw it with the help of an example. And then we will go on to understanding the types of hierarchical clustering that is agglomerative and divisive. And again, we would work through various examples and also we will draw agglomerative and divisive clustering, the various clusters and how really the clustering takes place. And then moving on further, we will cover the applications of hierarchical clustering. And here things would be clear as how hierarchical clustering is really applied in real life and how it solves some various pressing challenges of the real world. And our last topic of the day is advantages and disadvantages of hierarchical clustering, which will make it clear that why and how the hierarchical clustering is different from other algorithms, other clustering algorithms. So stay with me till the end of the video to understand completely what is hierarchical clustering. But before we proceed further, make sure you subscribe to Edureka's YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update. Also, if you're interested in online training certification, do check out the link given in the description. So now moving on further, let's understand what is clustering. So clustering is an unsupervised machine learning technique which forms clusters which is based on some similarity between the data points. Okay. Let me make things very clear and very simple for you all by explaining a few examples also of clustering. So there are various clustering algorithms that cluster the data like k-means, db-scan. We've also got mean shift clustering and there's also Gaussian mixture models and hierarchical clustering. So the way the data points are clustered, they differ from each algorithm. And today our focus is hierarchical clustering. So now let us understand what really is clustering. Now suppose I have some data points and I make a cluster of these data points and name it as X, all right? And I have got another data point, set of data points. This is from my data. And I cluster it in one, another cluster, which is named as Y. Now understand one thing very clearly that the data points in this cluster are similar based on certain similarities. So I can say that this data point and this data point, they have some similarity. Similarly, in cluster Y, this data point and this data point, they share some similarity. But another difference here is that the data point here in cluster X and here in cluster Y, they are different based on certain dissimilarity, right? So we form cluster based on certain similarity and based on certain dissimilarity. So now let us understand the concept of hierarchical clustering. Suppose I've got these cluster and I want to plot them. So I have this X, then I have got this Y. And suppose there's another cluster called Z. Now I see that cluster X and Y are somehow linked. So I cluster them into one like this. If I just cluster the entire X and Y into one single cluster, then this is how I would represent it. And then Z would be linked in a different manner with X and Y. Suppose this is again a Z cluster here. And then again, I would form one, another separate big cluster, which would cluster all these subclusters, right? So this, when I have this levels of clustering, this is known as hierarchical clustering. And the way the hierarchical clustering takes place is via agglomerative and divisive approach. So we will be discussing this agglomerative and divisive hierarchical clustering in our upcoming slides. So for now, let's just understand what is hierarchical clustering. So hierarchical clustering, it is also known as HCA or hierarchical cluster analysis. And this is a method of cluster analysis as we have seen. So what happens here is that 
This clustering allows us to build the tree structure from data similarities like we have built X and Y and we have created trees and these trees are actually called known as dendrograms. So the way you represent a hierarchical cluster or hierarchical clustering is through dendrograms. So we actually drew a dendrogram. Okay. So this is how the clustering has been formed and this is how the clusters are being made and this is how the relationship among the clusters has been shown by a dendrogram. So based on these things, now we will go on further to understanding what is agglomerative clustering. So when this hierarchical clustering follows a bottom-up approach, this is called agglomerative clustering. And when this is following up a top-down approach, this is used in divisive clustering. So now let us understand what is agglomerative clustering. So the types of hierarchical clustering are two, that is agglomerative and divisive. So now moving on further, what is agglomerative clustering? So agglomerative hierarchical clustering, this is also known as AGNIS, which means agglomerative nesting hierarchical clustering. And it follows a bottom-up approach, which means that clustering or clusters, they are formed from the bottom and are again clustered till a complete single cluster is formed. And what happens then is that the Clustering continues until we obtain a single cluster and we will see how we obtain a single cluster and we also represent it. So individual data points are clustered based on similarity and we go on clustering until there is only one single cluster left. So let us just plot this agglomerative clustering and make things really simple for us. Now suppose I have got these data points scattered here, A to G. And these data points have to be clustered. So another important thing is that now we will form clusters. So how clusters are formed. So we can see that based on some similarity, like because of the distance, nearby distance, A and B can be grouped together in a single cluster. So I'm just doing that. C and D, I form another cluster because they are near. So I just club them. And again, I would just club E and F based on their distance. And G is separate, so I will just form a separate cluster. Now what happens in agglomerative clustering is that I have to plot all these data points like A, B, C, right, D, E, F, and G. So these are separate clusters. The clustering starts from the bottom and each data point is treated as a single cluster which we will also understand with the help of an example further. But now for simplicity, let's take A, B, C, D. So then what happens is that since A and B are grouped as one cluster so this is how i just group them all right and c and d is grouped as one cluster this is how i group them e and f are grouped in one single cluster this is how i group them now remains g which is not being grouped into any of the cluster so now clustering i said that it is it continues until a single cluster is left so now i would have to have another level of clustering that means that E, F, G, since G is very close to E, F, I will cluster it in one single cluster, okay? And since I can see that both these A, A B, and C, D pairs, these clusters are again together, I will just cross this line and I will make one single cluster of these four points, right? So what I do is since these two are connected, I connect them with the help of this line figure that is tree structure dendrogram and this G E and F, they are connected somehow. I connect them. All right. Now, what happens is that I have got two big clusters, and clustering continues until a single cluster is obtained. So, in the end, I will have to cluster everything into a single cluster. And this is how I do that. And to join it, I will again join this entire graph. So, this is when it follows a bottom to up approach. This is called as agglomerative hierarchical clustering. Okay, so now we will go and see an example of this hierarchical agglomerative clustering, right? Okay, so let us understand what is agglomerative clustering with this example. Now we see that here the clustering takes place from bottom to up, and we have taken an example of population wherein we go on clustering until we get population. So here from the bottom, the individual professions are being plotted and we see that uh, let's let's take for a convenience the left hand side and on the left hand side, the red dots, as you see, this is individual profession in public sector. And on the another side, which we see in the brown circles is the private sector employment. So somehow there's similarity between private sector. So they are being clustered as one single cluster 
and the private sector as a another cluster these again are being clustered into one single cluster and that is employment cluster whereas on the another side we can see another cluster which is different and that is unemployed section of cluster of people now they again share one similarity and that is that they all belong to a single gender that is male so everything is being clustered into one single cluster that is male and then again male and female clusters are being clustered together to form one single cluster that is population similarly we also divide on the right hand side the individual professions of women clubbed into private and public sector and then again we have separate clusters of employed and unemployed women and they have been grouped into one single cluster and that is women again we merge the two big clusters into one single cluster that is population so this is how the clustering is taking place the levels are been increasing from bottom to up so when we are using this bottom up approach this is agglomerative clustering okay i think things are very clear now so now let's move on to how does this agglomerative clustering work and we will take this example as a reference so now what happens here is that each observation is treated as a separate cluster which means that each individual profession was being treated as a separate cluster and then these the two clusters that were closest they were identified and merged so the public sector which was closest it was being merged and so on now moving on further the clustering continues and then again the clusters were being formed when we see that employed and unemployed cluster they were different and we go on clustering until we obtain a single cluster and that was population right okay so now this was about agglomerative and now moving on forward to what is divisive clustering now in divisive clustering this is also known as diana and this is divisive analysis clustering algorithm and this follows a top to bottom approach this is just the opposite of agglomerative hierarchical clustering and clustering continues until small groups of similar clusters are obtained here this means that all the data points they belong to first one cluster and then the clusters they are formed as we move down the hierarchy now having said this let us understand what exactly is divisive clustering and we will take an example and let's understand it by drawing first and then we'll go on to understanding with the help of an example so now let us understand how divisive clustering actually work so now we've got suppose these data points scattered and let us now cluster them so for divisive clustering what happens is that we start from one single cluster and we just cluster them into one single whole right and then we will start clustering them so then what we will do is we will form another cluster based on the similarity or you can say the distance between efg cluster we see that these are near so what i do is i form one single cluster of ef and g and i see that these share some you know distance uh, they are similar and they have share the same distance and nearby so i cluster them into one single whole okay now i would go on dividing or clustering until i get single unit of cluster so i would go again further and let me take a different color so what i do is i will cluster a and b into one single cluster and c and d again into similar cluster based on certain distance and which we will study further and again we would cluster these clusters based on that e and f are, are very near to each other c and d are near to each other and so on now the clustering is not yet complete because i have not got individual clusters so what i do is i will cluster a and b into single cluster again and this would complete my divisive clustering starting from one single cluster to boiling it down to simple small clusters right so if i want to just write it down into a b c d some kind of a diagram so what i do is like similar figure i have suppose i start from a and b and c and d this is just same like agglomerative but this just the approach is different a and b and c and d but what happens here is that when i'm moving up from forward from above so i have all my data points here a b c d e f g and now i am moving on forward to dividing them into different clusters which is suppose a b c d here and here we have e f g and then i will go on further and make for the cluster for that i will go on this is g i know this is separate 
and here this is E and F, so this is E and F, right? And this figure is nothing but a dendrogram that I'm drawing. Don't mind the lines here. Just follow the concept. And here I have here A, B, and C, D cluster. And this has been divided into A and B. And this is divided into C and D, right? So this is how the clustering takes place. Dividing a single cluster, separating it down into separate clusters. And when I'm following a top to bottom approach, this is known as divisive hierarchical clustering. Now let us understand this with the help of an example and, and make things more clear. This was just a rough, a vague idea about how this clustering is and how our dendrograms form. So now coming to the same example of divisive clustering and here the clustering takes place from top and we have the population which we divided into male and female clusters. And moving on for further, the male cluster is divided into employed males and unemployed clusters, male. And again, the cluster is further divided into the private sector employed males and the public sector employees males. Similarly, we can replicate this with the female clusters also. So this is how divisive clustering approach approaches from top to bottom clusters. And this is divisive clustering. Now let's move on further to how does this divisive clustering work. So all the data points are treated as single clusters and then the cluster is partitioned into two least similar cluster. And then again the clustering takes place based on certain similarity between the clusters. And then further when we until we get a single individual cluster within a cluster and this is how divisive clustering will take place till the end. Now let us understand what is agglomerative and divisive clustering just in a nutshell. So when you're moving from bottom to up, it is agglomerative. And when you're moving from top to bottom, that is divisive. All right. And this representation is called dendrogram, which we have seen and we have plotted and we have seen it in the example too. Okay. So now moving on forward, let us understand how to decide the group of clusters. So it is done based on some similarity between the data points that we have seen. And the similarity could be single linkage, complete linkage, median linkage, centroid linkage, and which we will discuss it also. And it is now similarity. Another thing is that the similarity, it is obtained by calculating the distance between the clusters. And uh, generally, the distance matrices used are Euclidean distance, Manhattan correlation distance, even Minkow Minkowski distance is used. So now generally the Euclidean distance is used to figure out the distance between the data points. But the choice of a distance matrix again depends upon the data set under study, right? Like for example, in gene expression, correlation distance is often used. So now moving on further, how to calculate the similarity between two clusters. Now here we have got two clusters like X and Y. And to find the similarity between two clusters, single linkage technique is used. Here what happens is that the distance between two most similar parts of the cluster is being taken, the distance is mapped, and this is how clustering takes place. Another way is complete linkage. In complete linkage, again, what we take here is that we take two least similar bits of cluster, that is the farthest point in the cluster, the distance will be taken, and then the clustering is done. Another way to cluster the data or to form clusters to find the similarity between cluster is centroid linkage. Now what happens is that the distance between centroids of the two clusters has been taken. There are other methods also like mean or average linkage where the center of the cluster is taken. And now remember here centroid of the cluster is taken which is different from mean or average, right? And there is yet another way of linkage criteria like Ward's method where the sum of the square of Euclidean distance is minimized. All right, so depending upon the data set, we will choose or the hierarchical clustering will choose which method, which distance, which metrics to be applied, right? Okay, now moving on further to some of the applications of hierarchical clustering. Hierarchical clustering, now this is used in taxonomy, which is the biological classification of animals and plants kingdom. So let us understand this with the help of an example. Now, this is the example which we will be understanding and how the classification takes place. So now we start with the first order, that is the first level of cluster, that is carnivora, and it falls into order, right? Another, it has been divided into the family of Felidae, Mustelidae, and Canidae. 
right now these are some scientific names but when we reach the end we will understand what does this really mean so don't worry if you're not from like scientific or biological names friendly never mind now another level is genus so these this family is then further divided into the genes of a species which is panthera mephitis luthra canis and again this has been further divided into species so until we get individual clusters of these species we will keep on clustering them into various levels so the species are leopard here we have got striped skunk european otter and in canis we have got domestic dog and wolf right so domestic dog and wolf share some similarity that's why they have been clubbed into the same species and then they have been clustered into canis because they are carnivores and then the, but their family is canidae which is different from felidae and mustelidae and but just forming into the one single cluster that is carnivora right but these individual species they have certain dissimilarities between them but they fall under the same family and the same order right the same order not the family okay so this is how the application of hierarchical clustering finds its usage in taxonomy and biological classification of animal and plants now moving on forward to other applications of hierarchical clustering is tracking the outbreak so hierarchical clustering is used to track the virus and their sources and this is really very useful for scientists because this gives understanding of the virus source the origin of the outbreak like why and how the outbreak began and potentially they can save life and then another important application is clustering crimes in the city so the law making agencies and uh, the police involved can really understand the trends and the patterns in the data and classify the crimes accordingly and take strict actions as per the crime so need for more strict laws in clusters which are having high number of like murders or assaults or rape cases and this clustering really helps in understanding the trend the pattern in the data and accordingly then data driven decisions and actions can be taken yet another important hierarchical clustering application is evolution through phylogenetic trees now this means that to find how different or species relate to each other now for this what we take dna sequencing and hierarchical clustering they are being used together and the dna sequence of the species they are generated and similarity in the dna is found by calculating the distance between the sequences based on this phylogenetic tree is constructed and this really helps in classifying or placing the new discovered species into the gene chart or into the 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 family or the order of species right so hierarchical clustering is really useful for that now moving on forward to the advantages of hierarchical clustering is that it is easy to understand and implement and gives better results in certain cases too and here we do not need any prior information about the number of clusters unlike in k means where clusters have to be pre assigned the another advantage is that the outliers can be detected with the help of dendrograms and it also gives insight into the data structure so another advantage is that hierarchical clustering is more deterministic and more predictable whereas k means with random initialization can produce different results when we run the same data multiple times so hierarchical clustering will give you the same results whenever you run it multiple times so this is more predictable now moving on forward to the disadvantages of hierarchical clustering is that it is not suitable for large data set because of large space and time complexities time complexity of at least o n squared log n is required where n is the number of data points so you can you can really imagine that how much space and time complexity is involved with hierarchical clustering now another disadvantage is that it is difficult in handling different sized clusters and convex shape also at times it is really difficult to identify the correct number of clusters by the dendrograms so this is quite a complex thing and it is also sensitive to outliers and noise in the data set okay so having said this hierarchical clustering find is application in real life also and we have seen that ranging from biology scientific research market research gene segmentation and understanding the crimes in the city hierarchical clustering is being used thus to establish the relationship to figure out the connection among the data points or finding the similarity we use hierarchical clustering or even the dissimilarity we use hierarchical clustering and it helps to make data driven 
decisions and also strategic decisions. That is all from my side and thanks for watching. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!